The mixer automation in Cubase is very straightforward and easy, and it includes almost all the buttons and faders that you can see on the VST channel mixer. All you need to do is hit right and play the song and tweak the faders that you want to tweak, the pan settings you want to tweak, the buttons and everything. And um, and then that's it. Let's do it. Let's press play. Just like this. And then if you come to listen to it, you just switch right off, click on read, and then play it again. So the master went down. Here the hi-hat went up, the, synth, the second synth came down, and back up again. And for a perfect um, perfect mix, you can play the same section over and over again, and gradually go through all the faders until you think you've got it right. So you could theoretically hit right and read at the same time, and um, press play, and let's go for a small little section to get the balance right, and in between I'm going to hit the one key on the number pad to make the cursor go back to the beginning of the song and then I'm going to see whether I can tweak a different fader. Let's go. Now, how does everything work? Um, if I minimize this one here, you can see that Cubis has created a new track and a new part, the audio mix part, and here is some of the information that I've entered into Cubase with the with moving the faders. And when you double click on this part here, Cubase opens up the controller window, which shows you graphical representations of all the fader movements that have taken place. Let me maximize this one here and I'll change the view slightly. This is the um, movement of the master window, of the master fader. The master at the beginning of the song is always very loud, right at the top, and then I take it down and I leave the master there. Um, we can play the song, and you can hear the volume of the master went down. You could do the same thing again with the master window open, and you've seen the curve there. again. This one was the master movement, the master curve, and the master curve is selected here. The left one is selected. This would be the right one. And um, I, haven't on, I haven't just uh, moved the master control, I've also played around with the volumes. So if I open up the volume um, folder here, I've played around with the volume of the bass drum. This green one is the curve that I've done on the bass drum channel. This is the volume of the snare channel from the top all the way further down. Um, basically, every time you see a little black dot here, it means that there is some information that I've entered via the mixer. And um, the waveforms here that you can see are the waveforms that are being played on, the, on that particular track. So, for example, this is the snare drum track. So these are little snare heads and you can see maybe if you look closely this is bar 9 this is the beginning of bar 10 so within bar 9 the snare drum is played twice and um, you can even see the beats here that's beat 2, beat 3, beat 4 and if I go down that beat line the snare drum is on beat 4 and on beat 2 as well now I can't make any changes to the actual snare drum in this window but it gives you a great visual aid of knowing when the fades are going to take part, take place, and also whether the fades are affecting any of the audio material, because I can get hold of my tools here, pencil tool for example, and I could redraw some of the lines, and um, and you can see here for example the fader is right at the bottom, and as soon as the snare plays, 
I'm going to press L to create some more information. Same as with the other controller windows as well. And let's see what this would look like and uh, look and sound like with the, with the channel mixer. I'll bring the channel mixer back up again and uh, minimize it so we can see the curve and the snare channel. I have to switch the master part off. There's our snare channel that we're going to have a look at. We'll go to the left locator of the song. Keep an eye on this fader here. And you can see and hear that the snare drums are getting gradually louder. Now they've reached the peak. And now they start to come down again. We've had 0 dB as the maximum impact, maximum dB reading. And if I click on the reset again, we're getting levels of minus 16 and even less than that. Now, obviously, if you don't like the fader movements that you've done here live as you went along, you can then still tweak them and, and change them in the editor. But you might even be able to do this one. Um, I'll switch back onto right, press play. I'm changing the fader movements. Okay. And as soon as I let go of the fader, you can see that it's re that it has redrawn the actual fader movement according to what I've just done. Let's replay it. Now I got hold of the fader and it took it down. and so on. Now this view will also help me to show you something, um, a, a pe peculiarity of the fader. Sometimes you, you create a fader movement and you're not quite happy with it, obviously, and you want to change it, but you don't change it um, completely. And then within the song you always wonder what happened, why doesn't it work quite the way you want it to work. Now what I'll do is I'll redraw this line here like this for example and I want to change the fader ever so slightly in that it for example doesn't do any fader movements at all I want the fader to stay right at the top so I'll, I'll imagine I'm going to um, redraw the line here redraw the fader curve I'll do it on the mixer and I'll show you a common mistake which happens quite often I mean right is switched on read is switched on as well that's fine now I'll press play and I want the fader to be there. So I keep my finger on the mouse, that's important. Okay, now I, I personally think this is, uh, this is fine, this is okay. And I think, yeah, this is okay. So I'll take my finger off the mouse, off the um, mouse, and leave things as they, as they are. And then you can see what I'm going to say, can't you? The, um, I've only redrawn the bit where I kept my finger on the mouse, and as soon as I let go of the mouse, the fader curve went back to the original curve, which was there in the first place, or which was um, still going on, or sort of longer than the curve that I've redrawn over the top of it. And the same applies to the beginning as well. If I go back to the beginning of the song, the fader position is at minus 12.5, and nowhere near the, um, the fader position which I wanted here in the first place. And if I play the song, you can see the snare going hang, going down there first, and then it's right at the top. Another little mistake you might have noticed as well, that when you come to this bit here, the fader jumps. Obviously this is not very professional, and this is because I must have taken off my, the finger of the mouse ever so slightly for a short while, and the fader must have come down again. I can rewrite this quickly. For example, I could do it in step writing. I could, at this position, with the right button switched on, just move the fader up to the position I want it to be at. Let's go right to the top. And you can see already it's taken up this bit here all the way to the top. And if I now, now I could, for example, fast forward through the track, the fader moves. And if I go back to the left position again, it should, in theory, be um, 
at the top position, which it isn't for some reason. But if I go l forward a little bit, there. Now that the cursor is on the top position and the fader is right at the top there. Um, and then in order to, to keep it there, you'd have to keep your finger on the mouse, press play. let go and now it's redrawn it and the reason why it redrew the whole curve here all the way till the end is because um, from this point onwards remember the old curve started here, the old plateau curve started here from that point onwards there wasn't a change anymore okay so there wasn't um, any more information regarding different fader positions so so when I redrew the line up here and I went past the line where the this plateau started there weren't any more chain fader movements which could interfere with this bit here so that's why um, this whole lot here is, um, carries on until until the end even though in theory or what you would expect is you would probably expected um, to have this line be at the maximum up to there and then carry on with a plateau but the plateau didn't actually exist here the plateau only became in, came into existence because of this element here which was the the last event of the plateau which created the plateau if you know what I mean if you need abrupt definite um, changes um, in your curves then it can be a good idea to use the step right method to get the changes done this is done by using the um, transport bar as well now we're at position 9 or let's say in bar 9 let's go for bar 10 and change the position. Let's say we want to go down to there. Now we go down to bar 11 and say we're here. Let's go to bar 13 for now. Two bars further, we'll take it down to there. One beat higher, we'll there, we're there. A beat lower, we're down there again. A beat higher, and we're at the top. And um, in bar 15, we're down there. Let's play it. And as you can see from the right side here, there are quite a lot of things that we could automate. We've got um, the master volume, for example, here the volumes of the groups, the volumes of all the different channels, the pan settings, the sends for the different channels, this would be the send one of the bass drum channel, if I go down here, this is the send two, send two of the bass drum channel and so on. We can automate the EQ se sections, this is the EQ one, this is the first band because we've got a four band EQ on each channel. The four band, um, sorry, the EQ one, the first band, you can um, increase or you can play around with the gain of the bass drum, the frequency of the bass drum, the um, the width of the bass drum, and then it goes to the gain of the snare, the frequency of the snare, and the width of the snare, and, and then the gain of the next channel, hi hat, the next channel, the hi hat channel, the frequency and the width of the same hi hat channel and so on and then after going through band 1 with the EQ section all the way down you get to the band band 2, EQ number 2 and the same thing repeats again all over starting from channel 1 and so on